Hey everyone, thank you for joining online with us today. So for our family devotion, I just want to start by praying and then we'll jump in, okay? Dear Lord God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to connect online together, Lord. Lord, I pray as we walk through this week, Holy Week, uh, as we look to the crucifixion and then ultimately are grateful for the resurrection, um, Lord, we just pray that this week be something that we uh, be thinking about, Lord, we're, we're so thankful for who you are, and so thankful that you sent Jesus Christ to be the Messiah, to be the Savior of the world, and forgive us of our sins. So, Lord, I pray you just be with us, keep us safe this week, in your name, amen. Okay, so, now kids, uh, you know, I'm sure that none of you drove a car today, right? Because I'm pretty sure most of you ha haven't been leaving the house, but before you're allowed to drive, you have, you, know, you have to be a certain age, and then you have to pass a test. So I'm going to take a real quick road test and see what you know. Hey, and parents, maybe this could be a refresher for some of you since it's been a while. But the first question is, is what is a speed limit? What is a speed limit? Next, what does the color yellow mean on a traffic light? And then what happens if you put your car in reverse? Hopefully you got all those right. Let's try one more, okay? I'm gonna put this sign on the screen. Now, what does this traffic sign mean? This is a one-way sign. It means you can only drive in the direction the arrow is pointing. So today's Bible story is about a day when Jesus and his disciples traveled to a city. Now, do you think that they drove a car to get there? Now, I know they did not drive a car because usually Jesus and his friends walked from place to place and plus cars weren't around then. But listen to hear where Jesus and his disciples went. <clears throat> if you have your Bible, go to Matthew chapter 21. And as you're turning there, Jesus was traveling with his disciples to Jerusalem. They came to the Mount of Olives outside of a village. Jesus gave two of his disciples instructions. In Matthew 21, verses 2 and 3, says, Go into the village ahead of you. At once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. Now, real quick, you can't just take your brother or your sister's toys or you can't just take the last piece of cake or or take a sandwich out of somebody's hands as the lord needs it no that you can't do that because the lord did not tell you to do that the lord told these men what to do specifically and they went and did it see this happened to fulfill a prophecy or a word of god that was written hundreds and hundreds of years back see this prophecy said look your king is coming riding on a young donkey. See, the disciples followed Jesus' instructions and brought him to the donkeys. The disciples laid their robes on the animals and Jesus sat on them. As Jesus rode into the city, a large crowd of people started gathering and they started spreading out their robes on the road. And others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road too. See, crowds of people went in front of Jesus and followed after him. Look back in your Bible in Matthew 21 verse 9. It says, Then the crowds who went ahead of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. See, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. Some people asked, Who is this? The crowd replied, this is Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. So the people treated Jesus like a king. They were so excited. The people realized that Jesus was special and they shouted praises to him. Now, an Old Testament prophet had said that the Messiah would arrive riding on a donkey. Do you remember what happened in Matthew? See, Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey was part of God's plan from the very beginning. And that plan was this. God sent Jesus to be the Savior. 
God sent Jesus to be the Savior. Now that was God's plan from the very beginning. God wants people to believe in Jesus and to trust Him alone for the forgiveness of sin. Now, Jesus made the only way for any person to be given of sin and to have a relationship with God. You remember that one way sign? Jesus is the one way to heaven. The Bible says that everyone except for Jesus has sinned and disobeyed God. That's why God sent Jesus. Even though Jesus was ne has never sinned, he died on the cross to take our punishment. When we ask God to forgive us of our sins and trust in Jesus as Savior, we can have eternal life forever with God. So today, you know, you heard a lot about Jesus and what he was doing with the donkey. And ultimately, and most importantly, that Jesus is the Messiah and the Savior. Now, this is the very best news of all. Now, let's talk about who Jesus is and why he came. So as a family, what I would love for you to do is take time to discuss these questions, okay? These are those real life discussion questions right here. First question is, is who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? And then, why did God send Jesus? Why did God send Jesus? And then what is a Christian? What is a Christian? And then how does a person become a Christian? You know, God loves people and he planned from the very beginning to send Jesus. God knew people would disobey him and sin. Sin is any thought, any word, any action or attitude that disobeys God. The Bible says that every person has sin. Sin is a big problem and sin separates us from God and we deserve God's punishment for that, which is death. This is why God sent Jesus. A lot of you know this verse, John 3, 16, it tells us that Jesus is the perfect solution for our sin problem. Jesus lived a perfect life, died a perfect death, and died on the cross for our sins, rose again because Jesus gave up his life for us. We can receive God's gift of living forever with him. And that's the very best news you could ever get, ever. And it's not enough just to know that God you know, brings the good news, but you have to respond to it. First, you have to admit that you're a sinner and turn away from your sin. Next, you believe that Jesus is God's son and that God sent Jesus to pay the penalty for sin. Then you have to confess your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Now, someone who admits his sin, believes in Jesus, and confesses him as Savior is called a Christian. Christians want to obey God's commands follow his plans, and tell other people about Jesus. Now, I will tell you this. I'm not perfect. Your, your parents aren't perfect. Nobody is perfect outside of Jesus. So being a Christian doesn't mean we're perfect. Being a Christian means we're doing our absolute best to follow Jesus every day, to ask for forgiveness, to have him help us be better than we were yesterday. And our life point for this week you know, we're looking at Easter. We're looking at, you know, last Sunday was Palm Sunday when Jesus was riding on the donkey going to Jerusalem. Some people knew this and other people did not want to believe this, but this is the truth. Jesus is the Messiah. And I want you to say that with me, okay? Jesus is the Messiah. Now, I'm thankful that you've been joining us online. I'm thankful that you joined us online today. If you have any questions about what we've talked about, about who Jesus is, about what Jesus did, uh, about what does it mean to become a Christian, if you have any questions regarding any of those, I want you to talk to your parents. Ask your parents these questions and have them talk to you, sit down with you, and help you open God's Word and see what God has for your life. Now, I want you to know I'm praying for you. I pray you have a great week. And I'd like to close this out in prayer today, okay? Dear Lord God, thank you so much, Lord, for just who you are. Lord, we're thankful that you, Jesus, are the Messiah, that you came to, to save us, to forgive us, Lord. Lord, I pray for any boy and girl or any parent that may be having questions about faith, about trusting in Jesus. Lord, I pray that this week, today, whenever they watch this, Lord, I pray that you just move in their heart. You you speak to them, Lord. You you let them know that you love them. You died on the cross for them. 
that you rose, you know, you rose from the, the grave three days later to pay that sin penalty that they can trust in you and you alone. Lord, I thank you for us in your name. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, and I will see you next week. Hey.